Every now and then, a radio comes along that is a real game changer in amateur radio. And this radio is one of those. It's caused that kind of sensation. The new IC7300, it's here. But why is everybody so excited about it? Well, we're going to find out by talking to Chris from ICOM, who's going to run us through some of the things it can do and perhaps explain why this has created so much excitement. Yeah, it really has. And as you say, it is a game changer. Uh, there's been nothing like it. Uh, it's the first SDR radio from the, the big three manufacturers. This really has had a fantastic reaction, hasn't it, Chris? It has, yes. You, you look on the uh, EHAM, look at the reviews, uh, which is a pretty good gauge of uh, how something's been received. And without fail, it's had five out of five from everyone that's uh, posted a review on there, which is incredible, really. Really so nice. let's talk about why it is different. It is, first of all, the architecture of the whole thing. So it's an SDR radio, but rather than doing it the way people have been doing it with external SDR box plugged in your computer, yeah. this is an SDR radio inside what we recognise as a normal ham radio room. Completely standalone radio, yes, but it is SDR technology in that uh, you haven't got the conventional mixers and oscillators. Um, the the uh, incoming signal, receive signal, goes through 15 bandpass filters um, and the output from the filters goes into a A to D converter which converts the band of frequencies going through that filter uh, into data which is fed into a field programmable grid array processor which converts it into a 36 kilohertz stream of data which is uh, then processed to provide you with your receive audio. So let's just wind back a little bit, all the way back to the antenna socket there, because mm. you mentioned as the signal comes in, 15 bandpass filters. Yes. That's, that's real belt and braces, isn't yeah. it, for an SDR? Yeah. That's not normal for a normal um, amateur rig. Normally it's sort of eight or nine filters. But because the A to D converter processes the whole band of frequencies, uh, they have to be narrow to prevent the A to D converter becoming overloaded. The first major difference that we're going to notice with this radio is how we interact with it. So it yes. has normal looking kind of controls on the front, but boxed like a conventional transceiver. And we're going to interact with it like exactly. we do with a yes. conventional yes. transceiver. No, no computers required. Um, it has got a touch screen, so very easy to, to operate. Starting from the, the band scope, as you can see, you've got the uh, spectrum display along the top and a waterfall display along the bottom. Um, you can switch the waterfall off if it's not required. So for most people who've used an SDR in its traditional computer plugged in form, they're yeah. used to what the waterfall looks like. It, and on this display, it's really usable because you can focus in more on it, can't you? You can. Um, if you tap on the screen, it zooms in on that part of the screen and you can also change frequency. So if there's an interesting signal that you see on the, uh, on the waterfall, you can zoom in and actually change the frequency of the radio. So it'd be good to see that in action, Chris. We're actually, uh, I think, monitoring Volmet at, at the moment. So, <laughs> yeah, I think, think so we how are, easy yeah. is it? Oh, because, you know, I'm a typical ham. I've thrown the manual away, or I yeah. don't even know where I've put it. I yeah. want to press buttons. So how am I going to get to, say, 40 metres? Very and easy. A little tune around using With the, the touch script. screen, you touch on the megahertz digit, press the 7 megahertz button, and you're on 40 metres. Very easy to pick up a signal. Brilliant. It was interesting watching you as well change the band there because what this is showing us is we're, we're driving everything from this touch screen. So that was pretty yeah. straightforward. How did, how did you do that? Touch the megahertz and you get all the available bands. Uh, this is the uh, European version which also covers uh, four meters as well. Yeah, and frequency. what about five megs? Five megs, again, there's not a button for it because it's not a standard allocation. Um, and, and in any case, if you want to just put in a direct frequency, you could, you've got a keypad available there, so you can just key in the precise frequency you want. In terms of memories, how many memories do we have? Uh, it's got 100 memories, which is plus a couple of band edges for sort of scanning sort of between two frequencies. And talking of band edge, with your scope here, can you change the, the actual size of your scope? Can you, you can, you can actually, the scope can either be centred on the frequency you're tuned to, or you can program in an upper and a lower limit. Uh, and each band would have three limits that you can define yourself. So for instance, if you just wanted to 
look across the CW portion of the band, you could set the limits just to take in that band and that would give you more, more band spread on the, on the scope or you can look at the whole band. Not only does it give us the waterfall display here, mm. but we can also get a very useful display of our transmitted audio and the received audio. That's right. You've got a band scope which allows you to look at uh, the received audio and the audio bandwidth. There's a spectrum display of the audio bandwidth. Uh, and that actually works on your outgoing signal as well. So if you modulate, okay, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. You can see your outgoing audio and check on your transmission bandwidth, etc. Mike, India Zero, Alpha, Delta, X-Ray. This is Golf Zero, Foxtrot, Golf, X-Ray, Stroke A. Golf Zero, Foxtrot, Golf, X-Ray, Stroke A. Uh, thanks for coming back to us, Jim. The name here is Bob, Bravo, Oscar Bravo, and we're at ICOM UK in Hearn Bay uh, testing out the new IC7300. And uh, we were just having a look at the way when I'm transmitting, I can see uh, my audio waveform on the uh, colour touch screen here, so I can see what my audio looks like. It looks okay being transmitted to you, but you can give us a test on the ear. Mike, in the ear zero, Alpha Delta X-ray. Bob, the 7300 sounds good. Oh, like, I mean, uh, what I'm hearing of it, it sounds excellent. And, uh, you know, I'm sure if you're a lot stronger, I would be uh, hearing uh, the more quality. I've had, heard quite a few people on, uh, speaking on the 7300 and the local lovely wee radio. And uh, the capabilities, uh, what they can do is unbelievable. Thanks very much, 73s. So, there we are. That gave us a really good display of, yeah, of both his really audio good. and my audio. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Now, back to the touch display. What if I want to change the bandwidth? Have I got options there? Uh, you have. Um, you've got a filter button at the top here, which displays the filter bandwidth. You've got three preset bandwidths, but you can define those bandwidths yourself. So, for instance, if you press and hold the filter button, it comes up with a graphic display of the, the bandwidth, uh, which you can alter using the passband tuning, so you can offset the ah, so you can move it around uh, a little response, bit. Yeah. and you can also define the bandwidth. Um, it can be as wide as 2.9 or as narrow as 50 hertz. And, and that would store that setting for that filter position. So you've got three positions but you can customise them to suit your own requirements. So enormous flexibility there, That's depending right. on what mode you're using. Yeah. Normally, when we talk about bandwidth, and when you look at the bandwidth as a, as a graphic, you yeah. talk about it having skirts. Yeah. Uh, this wears trousers, really. They're sort of straight down. Very, aren't they? very sharp skirts, yes. You can alter the filter shape, but the characteristics are very sharp. So if you've got an adjacent channel signal, it'll cut it off very sharply. And it starts with a default setting that it considers to be right for the mode that you're using, and you can yeah, tweak that's from right. That. I mean, it works fine out the box, but you know, most amateurs like to, to customise things. Oh, we bit. like to fiddle. <laughs> we do like to fiddle. Uh, so that's tremendously straightforward. What other controls do we access directly then from the front panel here? Okay, from the front panel. So you've got this feature menu. Um, you've got a voice recorder where you can record CQs. You've got a meter display which gives you all the necessary um, transmit and receive functions, ALC, SWR, uh, temperature, and even supply voltage. Coming back to the voice recorder, so that yeah. records onto the SD card that's yes. in here, yeah. and so you can, so for contesting, or, or great for you to sit there sipping your tea while it calls CQ for you until exactly. somebody comes back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it will record the incoming audio too. Yes, um, you've got a separate button here, record, and you can start recording. Um, you can either program it to record just the incoming audio or the whole QSO, including your audio. We can email it to somebody, though, if we want, so they can hear what their audio sounds like. Yes, yes. It's a standard format, so it's just a standard WAV file, so you can just export it using the SD card or, or using the USB lead on the back. Are there any other useful features we're going to see 
that are on our touchscreen. Uh, yeah, you've also got um, what they call an SWR function, which allows you to plot the SWR over a band of frequencies. Oh, so rather than what your average rig does, just tells you what the SWR is on the frequency you're on, yeah. you can actually see how your aerial performs across the Yes, band. and you can define the number of steps and as a result, the frequency range you look over and you've got frequency on the horizontal axis and SWR on the vertical. So each time you key the mic, you get a reading ah. and it steps it onto the next frequency. Well, that antenna's performing pretty well. Yeah, well, it's sort of a folded dipole, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty flat. But uh, Yeah, so that is very useful. It, it's not a full antenna analyzer, but for no. the simplest level of just seeing how you're... It's a useful bonus feature. That, uh, if it doesn't look too good, we do have a built-in ATU. Yeah, it's a built-in switch capacitor inductor ATU. Um, which will match up to about three and a half to one on full power. But it's also got what they call an emergency mode, which allows the, uh, the tuner to match up to about 10 to one on uh, low power. I don't reckon actually that this is too big to cart up a hill with you for mobile no, operation. You no. take a decent battery with you. That's right, and the beauty of it is it doesn't draw a lot of current. Just on receive standby, it's only drawing less than an amp which is, uh, is ideal for running off sort of silver lead acid batteries, perhaps. Or it's a great rig to take on holiday, where you, know, you can get wherever you are on holiday and sling up a bit of wire. With an yeah. ATU like that, you're in yeah. business, aren't you? Yeah, 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 and 50 watts, you could do, do well. Yeah. Now, when we looked at the front controls here, um, and as we said, it's all very intuitive. You use the, the colour display, touch display a lot. Yeah. One thing we didn't point out was this little slot in here. So who's this living That's in here? That's for an SD card plugs in. You can use that for storing the, uh, the settings on the radio, so uh, once you've customised it to suit your own requirement, you can store those settings. So if you go to someone else's shack and they've got the same radio, ah. you can have everything set up the way you like it. And there's one other useful thing that you can store. We were talking about being able to look at the audio quality of an incoming signal on the, uh, the, the audio display that we've got there. That's we can right. send somebody a screenshot. You can do. Um, you just press the power button and it will store that, that screenshot. So if they've got a particularly nice clean transmission, you can email them that photograph. It's a standard sort of format, and you can just put it onto your PC. Also, this is gonna be used for the firmware updates as well as they come. Yes. You've only had one so it, far. Yeah, there's only been one, just a few minor changes, but... Uh, so you'd put that, you'd connect that to your PC or your Mac or whatever, yeah. you'd download the firmware file. Yeah. Put unzip it, in, it. Unzip it and um, just follow the, the routine for firmware upgrade. Control of our receive audio and our transmit audio, because we've yeah. talked about how other people's looks, yeah. what can we do to tailor our own? Okay, well, I've got to say it works fine out of the box. It's sort of adjusted pretty well to, to suit most people. But you know, you've got a set item here where all the items that maybe you just want to set occasionally, uh, right at the top, you've got tone control. Um, you can alter the tone on both transmit and receive, and you can tailor it on each mode. Um, so if you go to sideband, you've got sort of a treble or bass boost, or you can reduce it. You can actually alter the bandwidth as well. Rather than boost it, you can actually define the upper and lower limits. But really, it doesn't really need much changing. It's a very simple, straightforward way of doing it as yeah. well, because this can get over complicated and I know in it the past can. people have got themselves very bogged down in trying to sort out the audio settings. Yeah. As you say, great out of the box, but if you do need to tailor it, perhaps you're using a particular mic. Yeah. Talking of which, the microphone, this is a new mic, isn't it? This, it is. This has not been on an Icon rig before. No, no, it's a new styling. Um, it's an electric mic, but very good quality. It's had some very good reports, audio reports. So this is the HM219, which presumably works with all the other icon yes, rigs as standard well. sort of connection. But so you can update the microphone, if you even, if you can't, yeah. even if you're not <laughs> updating the rig. Um, we've talked about pretty much everything on the front panel here, except the tuning knob. Now this is something that is, uh, you know, whatever the technology behind mm. the radio, yeah. radio amateurs, and this is perhaps why an SDR radio in a conventional box means so much to us, That's right. is yeah. we like this, we like to tune it and yes. see what it feels like. So yeah. how, how does that work and what kind of steps have you got on that? Okay, the 
actual feel of the dial can be changed. You've got like a little slider control along the bottom. So if you're using it maybe mobile or you don't want to knock it, you can tighten the, the control up. And has it got a bit of weight to it so that you can... Yes, it's got yeah, a it's nice bad, feel. Actually, is it? If you can uh, you spin your way up the band there. Yeah, uh, there's no, no play or, or anything. Or spin your way out of the band. Yeah, so just well, <laughs> yeah, you can do that as well. I think one thing we haven't touched on is the, the analogue adjustments on the rotary control at the top here. Uh, that enables you to, to alter your power, uh, mic gain, compression and monitor level. So the things it. you might want to touch a lot. Yes, yeah, and um, very sort of intuitive to, uh, to change. So that's the front. Let's yeah. spin it around and just have a okay. look at what's on the back. Yeah. One of the reasons I love this radio, Chris, is you've got great quality. You've got the icon build quality. You've got the architecture of the SDR and the quality of that receiver. But at the same time, it has a simplicity yes. around it. Yes. It, it's a nice, simple design. And we see that reflected on, on the back panel. Yeah. You've got functional um, plugs and sockets, which um, make sort of interfacing very easy. Uh, with computer and um, any other um, accessories you want to plug in. So run through what we've got on the back for us here. OK, then. you've got the standard 4-pin uh, power plug for 12 volts DC, the uh, aerial socket, um, the standard ICOM 4-pin uh, remote control for something like an AH4 tuner, if you want to tune long wires or whip aerials. A um, couple of legacy sockets, a couple of phono sockets for ALC and um, linear switching. Um, it's got a relay in there for switching uh, linears. Uh, oh, so that's interesting, a relay, not transistor switching. So yeah. that's a bit more bomb proof. Uh, yes, yeah, not, not completely bomb proof, but <laughs> no, it's, a bit <laughs> it's more pretty bomb. good. Yeah. Um, you've got a standard quarter inch key jack. Uh, you've got a socket for extension speaker. Uh, socket for the CIV, the ICOM proprietary remote control. Uh, the USB-B socket for interfacing with a computer. So that means then that all the computer functions for remote control you can do through the USB and you don't need an external sound card to no. do any of the digital modes. No, no, the audio um, is present in the USB as well as the control data. So that's the only connection you need. You've also got a 13-pin uh, DIN socket, which has got all the analog um, let, uh, signals plus sort of switching voltages for interfacing. In essence, then, the IC7300 is a game changer. It is. Yeah. Because it's a different architecture of radio, it's a different quality of receiver and transmitter at its price point. And it also uh, offers specs in terms of the receiver that you'd usually find on much higher end models. Indeed, yeah. You can find all the specs on the, on the ICOM uh, website. Now I've actually met the radio and touched it, having heard so much about it and played with it and even had a QSO on it, I've got to say, Chris, I can understand now why there is so much interest in this radio. Any chance I could take this one home? I don't know. I think we might need it. <laughs> Darn.